So continuing our discussion on dissymmetry of lift, at this point it's probably time to uh, contrast and compare some of the differences and some of the similarities between gyroplanes and helicopters as, as it concerns the symmetry of lift. There's a lot of similarities, but there's also some differences, and those differences can be significant. And so, again, to fly either of these, helicopters or gyroplanes, you need to understand all the aspects of dissymmetry of lift. And we talked about earlier about helicopters, and that if you're in a helicopter that has a governor, and the governor's working correctly, and it's spinning the blades at 100% RPM, that the rotational speed of the blades does not change, okay? That's not true for a gyroplane. In a gyroplane, <clears throat> if you've ever noticed the gyroplane as they fly by you, you'll, you'll notice that the rotor disc is tilted back and that the air that comes up through the rotor disc is what drives it and produces lift, okay? So now, if we're down here at a thousand foot or so and we're just flying along in cruise flight, the same actions that occur with as far as teetering with to uh, compensate for the symmetry lift is pretty much the same for a gyroplane. You have an advancing blade that has more airflow across it. You have a retreating blade that has less airflow across it. And the blades in order, and so that produces a dissymmetry of lift, which is compensated for, again, by teetering of the rotor blade. So all of that is exactly the same. The blades teeter just like the helicopter blades teeter. Doesn't matter that it's an unpowered rotor versus a powered rotor. Dissymmetry of lift is, is uh, pretty much the same. Well, one of the striking differences is when you go up in altitude in a gyroplane versus going up in altitude in a helicopter. And we talked about already that if you increase your uh, um, altitude in a helicopter, you go to much thinner air. The rotor disc is a set size at a set rotational RPM. And the only way to make more lift as you go up into thinner and thinner air is to increase the angle of attack. And... Um, that has the effect of causing an increase in the amount of teetering for all the reasons that we've already discussed. Well, it doesn't really work that way with the gyroplane. The gyroplane has a fixed pitch to the blades. It's a semi-rigid rotor system, but both of those blades are fixed in pitch. We're, we're not, we don't have the ability to increase or decrease the amount of pitch to those blades like we can with a helicopter. Helicopter, we lift up on the collective, it increases the pitch on the blades. We lower the collective, it decreases the pitch on the blades. In the gyroplane, these are fixed blades, all right? And all you can really control basically is the tilt of the rotor or the angle of attack of the rotor disc itself, all right? So as we go up in thinner air in the gyroplane, let's say we were to rapidly climb up, we take off here and we rapidly climb up to six or 8,000 feet. And you can do that in a matter of, you know, just 10 or 12 minutes, I guess. As you're going up, and even though you may not realize it if you're the one actually flying the gyroplane, as you go to a higher altitude, you're actually having to have more of a uh, back stick position to maintain even in level flight or a climb you're the one. And the reason being is because, you know, again, you have fixed pitch blades. So those blades have to spin faster in thinner air to produce, a, again, a requisite amount of lift to support the weight of the aircraft. So as you're coming up in, in altitude, you're having to come to a higher angle of attack on the rotor disc, and that produces an actual increase in the rotor RPM. And then that's the major difference between a helicopter and a gyroplane. The helicopter, as you go up in altitude, the rotor uh, disc, or I'm sorry, the rotor speed does not change. You're at a fixed rotational speed to the rotor. In the gyroplane, as you go up to higher and higher altitudes and thinner and thinner air, the blades have to spin faster to produce a requisite amount of lift to maintain the uh, weight of the aircraft. So what things would make the blades spin faster in the gyro? Well, we had talked about one altitude. The second would be gross weight. The heavier that the gyroplane is, the faster that fixed pitch rotor on top has to spin to test the spin to produce an adequate amount of lift to support the weight of the gyroplane. I'll give an example of that. I went up, I set a uh, altitude record with payload here at Cape Dorado and I had 440 pounds of lead and concrete weights and everything in the back of the aircraft. And the usual rotational speed of the, uh, with say just by myself in the aircraft and some fuel, it's going to 
the rotational speed of the blades was usually about 350 RPM. As I was climbing up, uh, I went up to uh, about 15,000 feet with uh, 440 pounds of payloads, 200 keys of payload. And as it went higher and higher, the blade speed was increasing. It has to increase. It has to spin faster in thinner air to produce enough lift, again, to support the weight and or to climb. So once I got up near 14,000 feet, I kind of just quit looking at the rotor uh, tack. And once it exceeded about 520, I really didn't want to look at it much anymore. So I went up and uh, set the record and then came back down. The uh, 